explain to me why you would put my life in risk for a baby whose life was already lost. Now you plan on suing, right? And why? Why why not just drop it and just get on with your lives, you know? Um that's a good question. Well, <laughs> anybody who's been to the experience that we had would recognize that it's it's a horrible thing to to tell a couple or to tell I'm going to make it very personal. Um <laughs> Sir, you're going to lose your child. Also, we're going to take your wife. And uh, that's not okay. Um, I, I, uh, I don't accept that. And I don't think anybody should ever have to accept that. So I don't know what path of recourse is available to me. But the idea that some politician is going to decide that based on their belief that miracles are more important than medicine, and that you know, women aren't deserving of having their lives protected. Um, sorry, you might score political points, but you're not the person that had to sit there and have be told that that like uh, uh, that the hospital is going to compound your losses and potentially send you home with your life entirely destroyed and devastated. So where I'm at right now is like this: this needs to end. It, it's inhumane. So I don't know what recourse is available to us, but we're going to find out all the options and we're going to exhaust them. Um, after you were um, airlifted out of Malta, what happened? Well, we were taken directly to the hospital. Uh, she was received, you know, in the middle of the night. They did an examination. They discussed uh, treatments. And we were immediately admitted, and she received the care that we were denied in Malta. Um, when you have a partially detached placenta, uh, the chance of hemorrhage as a consequence of the miscarriage continuing in flight becomes really, really high. And so as a consequence, what we were informed of is every minute where you're not actually in a hospital where you can receive care in case there's an urgent emergency that arises is a big deal. So Spain was chosen as a, as a uh, in the hospital that we, that we went to, the specific hospital we went to is on Mallorca because it was the uh, least amount of time point to point for the medical evacuation team to get us there. And to give you a sense of what the insurance company actually had to do, they hired a company that typically flies a jet with a flight surgeon and a flight nurse who extracts soldiers from places like Afghanistan or war zones in Africa. Uh, the crew came into modern day, actually went in and put Andrea on a gurney uh, where they rolled her out. She was transported by ambulance for modern day with the lights on and everything straight to the airport to, to expedite everything, put on the private jet, uh, and, and the flight surgeon and the flight nurse flew, they, they were at the hospital point to point. So they showed up at modern day and they, they accompanied her all the way until she was checked in and actually brought to the hospital in Spain. So we got there in Spain and uh, they, they had a puzzled look as they were looking at the medical records. They could not believe what they were looking at from what they received from Malta. It was absolutely shocking to them. Like they were puzzled that this is a thing that like any medical professional would do because they're looking at Andrew's condition and they're like there's really only two courses of action here like it's it's really clear like we need to protect you and the only thing that like the baby's gone the only thing that we can do at this point is protect you and so the question is what procedure do you want um, from the moment that we got there until and like the whole time by the way this is worth noting um, the amount of compassion for the fact that we were we wanted the baby and they knew it. They knew that we were suffering a miscarriage. Um, that was a thing that, that we didn't receive much of at all in, in Malta. There wasn't really kind of any, there was zero compassion really for the fact that we were having an emotional loss. There was more along the lines of there was an expectation that we endure and that like, yeah, you're going to have to endure this ongoing thing, but like, that's your responsibility. And we couldn't really grapple with like, it was, it was just perplexing for the two of us to be in a spot where um, it's kind of like a, you know, you're, uh, you're in a burning building and the fire team is outside and like, we're gonna wait for the fire to put itself out. And you're looking at it and you're like, you guys are supposed to put this burning building out and save us. And instead they're like, no, 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 your, your job is to just, you just wait. So we went from that and now all of a sudden we're in Spain and you've got these, these uh, wonderful women who are like, you, you're safe now. We don't understand why you were put through what you were put through and we're not gonna talk about that, but here's what, here's what we currently have and here's what's available to you. And they're both, they're both gonna be you know, painful and they both have risks. 
um, and we're sorry, and we're sorry you're going to lose your child, but we'll do our best to take really good care of you. Injury, injury was provided the pill, and, and, and it was heartbreaking. Um, it, you know, the whole time as we were confronting it at various points, you know, the decisions, and it's like, you know, she held the pill in her hand, and she looked at it and just started sobbing and weeping at the fact that this is going to be, you know, the end of something that we both really want. Um, but it was necessary, right? Like, you don't really have a choice. So uh, she took the pill there. We had to wait an hour or two until they brought us and admitted us into our room. Um, she's outside getting a chance to like, she's, she's napping in the sun. I think she probably heard me on, <laughs> on the call. So she just checked in. Oh, um, so they walked us to our room, which is probably ready at like 3 a.m. Um, and they told us at that point when she took the pill that, that it's going to be roughly 24 hours. It was a strange thing because that, that day that we waited, I think it was Friday. I think we flew in on Thursday night and then Friday, you know, day waited. And it was, it was honestly, uh, it was a weird mixture because uh, we were both so fatigued and exhausted from having spent a weekend in modern day that most of it was spent sleeping. So as a, as, as her partner, I, I'm looking at her and I was just furious because she's trying to get a little bit of sleep before it's going to, she's going to wake up at 11 PM and have to labor through the night. And, uh, and, and so labor was induced. Uh, it, she gave birth at seven 30 in the morning. So eight and a half hours later ish, uh, incredibly emotional experience for the two of us. Um, they, uh, it, I guess it's kind of also like a notable or remarkable thing to me was that in Spain, uh, the miscarriage is accompanied by a really beautiful treatment for the parents of, uh, they treated it like you were losing a loved one and a member of your family. Uh, they had these little porcelain stars that we were able to write our name on and they put one of them is hung on a tree in the, in the maternity ward, uh, which made us feel like it was recognized like, this is a baby, like this is somebody we wanted. Um, so we wrote her name on there. They asked us if we had a name and, and we had, we'd been waiting, honestly, we didn't know our baby sex when we flew to Malta, but we found out by our midwife, you know, in, in the middle of being at modern day, one of the calls that we had, she told us that, you know, oh, she's a fighter. She's tough. She doesn't want to let go. She's got your guys spirit. And the two of us looked at each other and started, started sobbing. Uh, Cause when, when we were falling in love, Andrea had a dream that, that we were going to have a daughter. And so this has kind of been a thing that, that's been with us for a long, long time. Um, so anyways, having the ability to, to like, we, we named her, we named her Claire, we wrote it down. I wrote it down on little things. They gave us a bracelet with a small tree, like a tree of life as a, as a thing to memorialize her. Uh, just wonderfully kind and thoughtful treatment. Um, I'm happy it's coming to a close. I feel like we can finally start to grieve and kind of, kind of pick up the pieces. I've, I, <laughs> it's gonna take a while. And I'm, I'm really, really grateful to all the people who rallied to help us, the Doctors for Choice, our insurance company, and especially the doctors and midwives here in Mallorca. Why, why keep, why let this keep happening? It's happened before, same hospital, it's happened in other countries. Women, women die, and for what? I, I just, I don't understand, um, and I, and I don't want this to happen to anyone else. It's terrible. Just, just the loss of a baby is already terrible. The, you know, that happened organically. We'll never know why. It's heartbreaking. It happens to, to many pregnancies. Layering on top of that, what felt like torture and, and for nothing, there was nothing ever to be gained. We couldn't have saved the baby. We would have if we could. Um, why, why hang on to this law and, and let this keep happening? Why, why, why put women's lives at risk? 